Hello everyone and welcome. My name is Geneviève Mario Pelletier and I'm the director of the Teaching Commons, York University's Teaching and Learning Center. And I'm Robert David Winkler. I'm an instructional designer at the Teaching Commons. In the context of COVID-19, much of our work has been profoundly transformed and the Teaching Commons is no exception. To guide instructors in the sudden shift to remote teaching, we had to reinvent how we support them. In the midst of addressing this tremendous challenge, we saw a unique opportunity to leverage a bold transformation forced upon us. In this presentation, we describe York University's BOLD strategy, BOLD standing for Blended and Online Learning Development, and how we used it to launch an institutional shift towards quality online learning amidst the pandemic. We then showcase some of the learning objects instructors have developed since the spring through partaking in the BOLD Institute. So let's get started. First, some context. In 2018, we created a blended and online learning development strategy, affectionately referred to as BOLD. Our goal was to streamline the process of online course design and development by bringing talented individuals from different reporting units under one umbrella. Before COVID-19, faculty enthusiasm towards e-learning was limited, and as a result, we had few examples to showcase. And while we had a couple of training options for faculty wanting to learn more about e-learning, these options tended to cause frustration for their conceptual focus or for the sustained engagement they required. When the pandemic hit us, we were faced with a tremendous challenge, bringing hundreds of instructors up to speed on a large set of technical skills, while also familiarizing them with digital pedagogy, all the while drawing their attention to issues of access and equity. As a result, we developed a three-tiered approach to supporting instructors, hoping that this would enable us to respond to the diverse and dire needs related to remote teaching. We revised and expanded our bold strategy to include a new comprehensive website that has over 40,000 hits to date, as well as three distinct areas of teaching development. First, remote teaching skills for practicing teaching short lectures remotely and discussing successes and challenges with other instructors. Second, the Pedagogy of Online Learning, a series of four-week asynchronous courses focused on the practical pedagogy of e-learning with a range of practical learning activities delivered within our institution's learning management system. And third, intensive e-learning design and development support. And here, the Bold Institute was completely redesigned into an eight-week course and complemented by Bold Open, both of which we describe next. The Bold Institute was purposely redesigned under the aegis of inspiring action to make an impact in the fastest, most effective, and most supportive way possible, basically as a bootcamp for change agents. It fuses two main areas of expertise, notably pedagogy and technology, to address faculty needs in two areas of e-learning practice, online facilitation and content authoring. Ultimately, BOLD builds capacity through both academic theory and its immediate practical application in focused action. We sought to humanize and facilitate the difficult transition we were all forced to make amidst COVID-19 by adopting five guiding principles for the course and its design. The number one guiding principle was providing multiplicity of access points. Bold's target audience enters the course with widely different levels of pre-existing digital skills, online learning experiences, and individual affordances. To reflect this, the course is provided in two distinct forms, as a regular course and as a Bold Institute open course. Both versions share the exact same DNA in terms of structure, content, look, looks, and resources, but they cater to different types of engagement. The open version is fully autodidactic. It offers a completely autonomous learning experience with no facilitator, no time limits, and no weekly assignments involved. The regular Bold Institute course, on the other hand, offers a highly systematic and structured, time-bound approach. Reflecting the same principle, virtually all of the course's content is provided in multiple formats as well. The second principle was clarity and transparency 
in structure and expectations. Notwithstanding the limitations of the learning management system, we maximized our efforts to structure BOLD's online presence in an easily understandable and clear manner to ensure consistency in visual clues for smooth navigation and orientation, and to offer an optimized path of learning for all our participants. The third principle was small and incremental, but tangible outcomes. Instead of trying for a comprehensive review of all abstract academic theories, or you know, conversely, a mechanical introduction to every single aspect of Moodle and other technology in, in the technologies in general, we sought to fuse the best aspects of education and technical training into a single holistic experience. So accordingly, our learners start each and every week with only a couple of new models and theoretical frameworks and a narrow set of technical tools that assist them in translating these theories into application. Then they cooperate to construct a shared understanding of the theories as well as to guide each other's planning efforts. Next, they individually turn their revised plans into concrete products, usually learning objects, using the tools provided. And at the end of the week, they submit their learning objects for constructive feedback and both reflect and receive reflections on the experience. And finally, they use these products as the foundation or launching pad for the following week's theories and projects and applications in a permanently ongoing cycle. The fourth principle we adopted was that perfection is never a fixed state, but a dynamic process. Nothing our faculty prepares or creates is ever perfect, nor is it expected to be. But participants never stop improving on their creations. Although the course is focused on enabling participants to translate newly acquired knowledge and skills into tangible learning objects, these objects are always viewed as, in, viewed as interim milestones in a quest for continuous improvement. And finally, the fifth principle was that the Bold Institute as a course is a journey built on partnership and constant assistance. In Bold, the learning of the instructor and the learning of the students intersect to create a sweet spot of communal knowledge construction. The course is not framed on a formal authority-based dichotomy of experts versus novices, but as a community of knowledge workers who all contribute to each other's growth. Perhaps the most challenging part of preparing for this presentation was to narrow down our selection to only a handful of static examples from our participants' rich and dynamic work. In all honesty, we hardly had a single student complete board whose learning objects would not have merited inclusion in this presentation. By reviewing the rich and amazing work of our participants, four common themes seem to have emerged. First, going far beyond the minimum, ambition and courage to stretch oneself. Second, constructing learning experiences instead of information depositories. The third common theme was employing a broad range of media and techniques through a seamless combination of external objects and custom-developed components. And finally, creativity unbound. What do we mean by each of these? Well, the first common theme we noticed while reviewing our participants' work was how much ambition and courage they demonstrated after the first few weeks. Most faculty who participated in our course had severely limited experience with online learning prior to it, and many had never even experimented with digital content development at all. Because of this, Bolt's intended final outcome for each participant was to create something between a single learning object and a reasonably detailed lesson. By comparison, most participants, like for example Professor Mira Bloom, vastly exceeded this expectation by developing a whole series of highly detailed lessons, often spanning one or two entire semesters. The second thing was that our faculty not only accepted the suggested paradigm of building learning experiences that are comprehensive, but also actively sought to implement this in practice. The lessons they created were not monolithic blocks of information dumped, but intricate latticeworks and mosaics of diverse mini experiences. These experiences link to, build on, and integrate with each other to form a journey a journey in which each serves a specific and pre-planned function, 
from eliciting curiosity to creating intrigue, from sharing information to inviting students to apply, analyze, track, and even evaluate their learning. These are certainly not textbooks published online. Some professors, like uh, Professor Kale Coyle's course, for example, on modes of reasoning, go so far as to combine elements of gamification with highly sophisticated and challenging academic content. Students are given a roadmap, for example, of the course that shows modules or lessons as levels in an adventure, and they go on cognitive quests to collect badges, not unlike collecting loot in a dungeon, dungeon crawl. The third common theme was the amazing variety of rich multimedia content our participants developed or sourced and incorporated into their work. Most started out without ever having seen any video editing application, yet by the eighth week, their lessons were teeming with complex digital creations. One might even say that the marriage between these members of York University's faculty and e-learning at the time of COVID was truly officiated with something old, something new, something borrowed, something blue, and a sixpence in your shoe. <laughs> Several faculty, like, for example, Professor Gillian McGillivray, went so far as to shoot their own presentation, edit them with music, and even add H5P components, such as mini-quizzes and pop-up links to additional content to render their videos fully interactive experiences. Again, these are features and functions of digital authoring that are challenging and require a paradigm shift in perspective. Yet, our participants eagerly and productively engaged with them. Finally, the fourth common theme we identified was the immense creative capacity Bolt has been able to unleash in our professors. Now, there were certainly many common components and approaches across all lessons, uh, and they are clearly displayed by our examples as well. Now, some were one mandated by structural considerations and efforts at standardization within specific faculties. Others arose out of the common limitations of the learning management system and the tools used, or simply just from the availability of certain external services shared by the academic community. In spite of all these factors, advocating for uniformity and homogeneity, the variety of solutions our professors came up with has been nothing short of stunning. From simpler structures built around weekly lessons to more complex layouts, like Professor He Jin Song's approach of building her students' journeys around broad themes made up of multiple lessons on a mosaic of topics, the self-contained journeys of online learning have been an authentic reflection of the complex diversity at York University. We believe that in the Bold Institute, technology has once again become what it was intended to be in the first place, just a means to an end. It didn't create or supplant learning. Rather, it helped all of us to humanize a new environment for learning to inspire action and impact in the age of COVID-19 and hopefully beyond. So far, we have offered four iterations of the Bold Institute, engaging around 100 faculty members. You have just seen some of what they developed by taking the course. The learning objects our participants created is our most prized measure of success but we also surveyed them to learn directly from them the impact of the course on their own development. The pre and post course survey data indicate a high level of satisfaction and increased confidence in the participation's self-rated ability to redesign a course, apply new strategies to online teaching and learning, use the learning management system, and choose activity types. We also identified a gap in our training, namely, our ability to bring our participants' technical expertise to match their ambitious pedagogical agendas. Despite our best efforts to fuse pedagogy and technology, we find that some of our participants get the pedagogy faster than they can learn the technology, and sometimes it's the other way around. In other courses, though, we have recently initiated a week drop-in session that provides extra technical support to the unique needs of each cohort. In the future, we will incorporate this in the Bold Institute as well, so that these participants are supported uh, from a technology standpoint, more so than they have so far. 
Sector-wide, we anticipate a massive move towards quality online course development to remedy makeshift remote teaching we are struggling through right now and mitigate the future COVID-19 waves and any other potential devastating disruptions to the traditional delivery of educational experiences in higher education. The results we have just shared with you make us believe that with patience and determination, Bold can become a powerful catalyst for e-learning at York. We also hope that it can inspire other institutions to develop their own version of a multi-tiered approach to engaging and impactful e-learning support. Thank, Thank you, you for, for listening, listening and, and we are looking, looking forward, forward to answering your questions. questions.